Now, do not get mixed up. You see these? Do you see these? Superficial. The superficial ones which are kind of like very mobile. These are your lymph nodes. Don't mistake them for? Submentibular. For glands, okay? Oh. So where would be the gland? You are going to look for two glands, submandibular and parotid. Parotid is going to be right next to the ear. So here is the ear, and parotid is right here. It has somewhat like a fatty structure. Okay, so when you look at it, it looks kind of like fatty, fatty structure, right? Mm -hmm. So this is your parotid. parotid. Right underneath it, more fixed, and also below and under the... The lymph nodes, you are going to see the submandibular gland. So this is submandibular gland. So this right here is parotid, and this is submandibular gland. Okay? Clear? Okay. Now we are going to look at the chest. Okay, we are done with the head and neck. Now let's, um, or you know what, we did not do the thyroid gland. Okay, now on the side of the trachea, you see this gland which is kind of like darker, brownish, right? And it is present on both sides, so there is one on this side. Do you see this? And one on this side. These are your what? Thyroid glands, and they are going to be present below the larynx. So this is where the larynx is, thyroid cartilage and cricoid cartilage. Below that, on either side, you are going to see the thyroid gland, which is present at the beginning part of the trachea on either side. Do you understand? Okay. Then we are going to look at the chest cavity. And in the chest cavity, there it will be lungs, right? So these are the lungs. And this is the heart. And the heart has what? Pericardial sac. It has pericardial sac. And you separate it out. Can you see this? OK, so this is the pericardial sac. You separate it out. And this is your pericardial sac. Then you have got a pericardial sac is made up of fibrous pericardium, right? Then you have got the serous pericardium, right? So it is present right here. Okay. Oh, see? Do you see that? So this is serous pericardium, which is made up of two layers, which are visceral and parietal. Visceral will be touching the heart. Parietal will be away from the heart. And in between them will be your pericardial space, which will have pericardial fluid, right? These blood vessels that you are seeing are the coronary arteries, the red ones, and the blue ones will be coronary veins. Well, it did not take the dye, so it's not clear. And this blue structure right here that you are looking at, this is your right what? Atrium. Atrium. Okay? So this is your heart. Now, in the heart right above here, right here that you are seeing this fatty structure. Uh, sorry, not this fatty structure. This structure that you are seeing, right? Huh? Mm -hmm. This is your thymus. Okay, it is more clear over here. You can see this is the heart, right? This is the heart. Mm -hmm. Right above it, you see this brownish? This is your what? Thymus. This is your thymus. And even thyroid gland is much more nicer and clearer over here. This is your thyroid gland. Okay? Mm -hmm. And you can see it right here. This is your thyroid. 
thyroid gland. So this is thyroid, and this right above the heart, heart is your thymus gland. The size of the thymus gland tells you how old the cat is. This is pretty big thymus, so, so this was a younger cat. Okay. Now, once we are done with the heart, we are going to look at the pleura. So this shiny connective tissue right here, this is parietal pleura, okay? Visceral pleura is going to be on the viscera, which means it's going to be on the heart. So this is, I'm sorry, it's going to be on the lung. So this is your visceral pleura, okay? This right here is the diaphragm, right? This is diaphragm which divides chest cavity, uh, which divides uh, the ventral cavity into thoracic and abdominal cavity. Now, in the abdominal cavity, we are going to look at the different viscera, and I like this cat more for that purpose because. It has, this covering, which is kind of like apron, okay? And this is called the greater omentum, okay? It keeps all the viscera together and covered. When you remove it and you look underneath it, then you are going to see the different viscera. So this right here is your liver. Liver, very good. And now, back to our own cat. And now, do you see this structure that I'm holding with my forcep? Huh? Mm -hmm. This is called falciform. Falciform. falciform ligament. It attaches the big liver to the diaphragm, this muscle of breathing. Okay? Now, on the liver, if you look here, do you see this structure right here? This is the gallbladder, okay? Now, we are going to look, on, uh, look at the different structures in the abdomen. So, this is your stomach. Very good. And the stomach is going to have two ends. So the top end where it joins the esophagus. esophagus. So this, where the pin is going, this is esophagus. Cardiac sphincter. This is the esophagus, right? Mm -hmm. And the place where esophagus joins the stomach, that is called lower esophageal sphincter or cardiac sphincter. So... The sphincter is right here. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Now, the other end, where the stomach joins the duodenum, right here, is your pyloric sphincter. Do you understand? And you can see how it joins right here, the C-shaped, the C-shaped, intestine, small intestine, and this is called duodenum. Do you see this brownish structure in the loop of the duodenum? See? This is pancreas. Okay? This right here is pancreas. This right here, the structure that you are seeing, which is present on the left side, this is the spleen. Do you see that? This is the spleen. Now, you can cut the stomach along the greater curvature to see on the inside what does it look like. And what does it look like? You see these? These are rugae. And then, do you see that stuff on the inside? That is the worm. So this cat had worms. 
See? Okay. So this is the stomach. Now the intestine, we talked about this is duodenum, right? The top part of the intestine, this top loop, this part is jejunum. Below it is ileum. And whenever you will be asked about ileum, you will be asked where it enters the cecum. So you will look for the bigger intestine, which is the large intestine with a blunt end. You see this? Blunt end. So this right here is cecum. So where small intestine joins the cecum, right here, that is your ileocecal valve or ileocecal sphincter. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Now, we are going to look at the ascending, transverse, and descending colon. So this is right here. Ascending colon, this is transverse colon, this is descending colon, and these are basically your large intestine, right? Small intestine loops are held together by, you see this, mesentery, okay? This is the mesentery, which holds it together. The other thing that we need to do is the flexures. So, the flexure is kind of like the turning or the corner. Two flexures, hepatic and splenic. So, this curve right here, or the turn, is the hepatic flexure because it is corresponding with the liver. This turn right here <coughs> is going to be the splenic flexure because it's corresponding with the spleen. Now we have to look for the <coughs> bile, common bile duct, right? So you have to look for something which is greenish and is going towards the duodenum, right? So we push it. Do you see right here? This is duodenum because we have the pancreas right here. You see this, this, now do you see, do you see this? Huh? Mm -hmm. This is the common bile duct because it is opening into the duodenum and it is coming from the what? Gall bladder. And then you can further trace it to hepatic, left and right hepatic duct and the common bile duct. Do you see? Huh? Did we cover everything? for chest and abdomen, mm -hmm. okay, so that is all for today.